Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, your wondrous birth means nothing unless we are born again. Your death and sacrifice mean nothing unless we die to sin. Your resurrection means nothing if you be risen alone. Raise and exalt us, O oh Savior both now to the state of grace and hereafter to the state of glory, wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise as you are able in body and spirit for our hymn of praise, Up From the Grave He Arose, number 322.
Let us affirm our faith. The Apostles' Creed, print in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving generously to the life of the church. You're welcome to give this morning of your tithes and offerings. <clears throat> we invite our ushers to the front to take up our morning offering. <clears throat> I'll let you know that we thank those that have decorated the cross beautifully with flowers there in the meditation garden. If you'd like to take pictures after the service, you're welcome to do so. Come on down. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let us pray. Risen Savior, we honor and praise you that you are alive. You are our hope and salvation. Joyfully help us to give to you as an act of worship. We pray your blessing upon this money. May it help strengthen your church in this community and throughout the world. In the name of Christ we ask. Amen.
please remain standing for a hymn of preparation, Because He Lives, number 364. Listen now as we go to God in prayer.
Loving God, we give you thanks this day for the ways in which you surprise us. We thought all was lost, but now all has been found. We believed that Jesus was dead, but now he is alive. We assumed that death was an ending, but now it is a beginning. We thought the story would end with a tomb that was filled with a body, but instead, the story begins with a tomb that is empty. Just as you have resurrected your son from death, we pray that you will also resurrect our lives. Meet us in our anxiety and resurrect us to peace. Meet us in our despair and resurrect us to hopefulness. Meet us in our wanting to quit and resurrect us to the place where we want to go on. Meet us in our loneliness and resurrect us to community. Take what is dead in us and around us and in our world and make it new once more. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to boldly pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
here. Wow. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, David, Olivia, choir. Super, thank you. This morning our passage comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. In honor of the Gospel lesson, please stand. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Siloam brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. John Claypool, a famous preacher who served Crescent Hill Baptist Church, shared this thought-provoking story. A young lady coming home from college came into his office and she said that she did not believe in God anymore. Even though she grew up in the church, she wanted her name taken off the church rolls. She said, it was all just a fantasy. Tell me your dream and I'll tell you mine. She said she learned in college that Freud said that religion is just an opiate for society. And Karl Marx said that religion is just a way to keep people in their place. It is all just a fantasy. There is no evidence of faith in God is real. Claypool agreed with her that at times, Christians can hide or mask thinking deeply about their faith. He shared with her that when he was young, he went to a revival and the preacher said that if he was just dreaming, just let him dream. Claypool said that that hit him the wrong way, that just because we believe in Christ doesn't mean we stop seeking to know God intellectually and emotionally. He said to her that he knew that she was concerned with what is truth. And he challenged her to do three things. First, to read through the Gospels and see the story of the crucifixion and resurrection as though it were for the very first time. Read in Acts 9 how that Paul, who was the great persecutor of the church, was dramatically changed. He asked her, do you really think that he wanted to admit that he was wrong? And third, write down your own religion. If you no longer believe this, what do you believe? And he confessed to her that apart from Christ, his religion would have nothing to do with turning the other cheek, forgiving seven times seven, sacrifice, obedience. Well, the college student took up his challenge and over the next several years, there was a miraculous change in her outlook. And she went from fantasy 
to faith. That first Resurrection Sunday, those hiding disciples, it must have all just been too much for them to even believe. It must have seemed like a fantasy. A fantasy is an imagined event fulfilling a wish. Oh, how those confused, tired, grieving disciples must have longed to believe that death did not win, that death did not get the final word. But at first, for those disciples, believing that Jesus, that he is alive, was way too much to expect. It must have seemed to them no more than a fantasy. But they had heard the good news again and again in Mark 8, 9, and 10. Jesus shares his passion predictions. They knew that Jesus said that he must be crucified and that he would rise on the third day. How could they not believe that this story would not end with death and burial? In Mark 14, 28, we find Jesus told them, that he would go before them and appear to them in Galilee. The disciples had heard our Lord's life-giving words, but unfortunately, they did not have ears to hear or hearts to believe. It's been said before that the average person has to hear something seven times before they ever understand, comprehend. The disciples were still in the dark, thinking it was all a fantasy. Is Easter more than a fantasy for you? We've been journeying together through the season of Lent, mourning our Lord's death so that we could truly celebrate on Easter Sunday. Some people view Easter as just a long coffee break just a break from their normal activities, and then they go right back to their old way of life. Easter, it is about more joy, more peace, more hope than we can possibly imagine. He lives, he lives, and because he lives, everything has changed. What does Easter mean to you? A children's Sunday school teacher asked her class, what is Easter? One little boy raised his hand and said, I know, I know. That's when we eat turkey and the family comes over. We watch parades. The teacher said, no, no. That sounds like Thanksgiving, not Easter. Other little boy said, I know, I know. That's when we have presents under the tree. She said, no, no, no. I think you're thinking about Christmas not Easter. And she was discouraged thinking that none in her class knew the true meaning of Easter. That is, until a little boy raised his hand and said, I know, Easter, that is when Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. She was relieved at least someone knew in her class the meaning of Easter. That he is until he added, and when he rises, if he sees his shadow, we'll have six more weeks of winter. <laughs> Easter. Are you a person of faith? What you believe about Easter will affect not only how you live, but how you treat others. Easter, it is the center of who we are. 1 Corinthians 15 reminds us, for if Jesus, he had not risen from the grave, then our faith, would be in vain. Let us reflect on that first Resurrection Sunday when the three women go to Joseph's tomb and they carry with them nard, frankincense, myrrh to anoint Jesus' dead, smelly corpse. The original Spice Girls. <laughs> Think about that. They went to the tomb, not in faith, but out of a sense of profound beauty, respect for their rabbi. 
And as they walk along to the tomb, they ask each other, who will move away the stone, the stone that was so large in front of the mouth of the tomb? How will they get inside to anoint Jesus' dead, smelly body? Max Lucado writes in his book, he still moves stones. We can see stones as hardships, difficulties, problems. What stones are in your life? We can look to the Bible and see people of faith and how they dealt with stones. Moses, his excuses. Elijah, his depression. Peter, his failure. Or Paul, his past. He still moves stones. Please remember that these stories, the goal is not to look back with amazement, but to look forward and to remember that God who spoke continues to speak. That the God who forgave continues to forgive. That the God who came continues to come. God moved the stone then and now. Stones are no match for our God. So the women appear there in front of the tomb and the angel said to them, do not be alarmed. Come on in and see where they laid him. The tomb was empty. So why do you think the stone was moved? Was it moved so that the death conqueror could get out? Was Jesus so tired and weak from rising from the grave that he couldn't push that stone out of the way? Of course not. Heavens, no. The stone was not moved so that Jesus could get out. Oh, but so the women could get in and see for themselves. That he is alive. He has risen. The tomb is empty. Does the empty tomb prove to you that he is alive? There are some people they want concrete, absolute proof who are waiting like honest Thomas to feel, to see for themselves before they will ever believe in Jesus' resurrection. If we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, if we had concrete, absolute proof in the resurrection, there would be no need for faith. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Our God is a God of surprises. God is near. We can only go so far with our minds trying to understand the mystery of Easter. And then we are invited to embrace a childlike faith. Claypool put it this way, that faith is not an alternative to knowledge. Faith is another way of gathering knowledge. We have five senses to gather and receive information. Faith is that sixth sense. It is the deepest part of who we are that enables us to live as an Easter people. I have been crucified with Christ, not only will I live by flesh, but I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. To me, the most surprising part of the story is not that Jesus rose from the grave. He shared that with his disciples again and again. The most surprising part to me is that the women remained silent. With such great news, how could they have been alarmed to tell others? With such good news, how can we not share with others? He lives. He lives. And because Jesus lives, everything else has changed. How our world today needs to hear the good news. Our cynical, 
violent, evil world. And when you think about it, the evil of Friday gave way to the good news, the victory of Jesus on Sunday. And that because of his victory, there is new peace, new hope, new joy. Let us boldly proclaim to others our faith in the risen Savior. We are challenging you as a church, 50 people in 50 days. There are 50 days between Easter and Pentecost. What if we had 50 new members by Pentecost? I would encourage you and challenge you to think about what are 50 things that we can do? Sending out 50 cards, making 50 visits. There's a lots of things that we can do as an Easter people in these days between Easter and Pentecost. Let us seek to live out our devotion to Christ and to share with others all around us who are discouraged, who need to know the peace, the joy, the hope of Christ. To be reminded that Easter is not just tacked on to our religion, but Easter, it plays the center role in who we are. Let us live as a people of hope. Wayne Lamb writes in his book, 100 Meditations on Hope. A little bird in the midst of a storm was clinging to a tree limb as the rain fell and the wind blew. The little bird continued to sing and to look confidently in the midst of the storm as if to say, shake me off. I've still got wings. The Christian can look into the face of the storms of life, whether death or problems or adversity, and say, shake me off. I still will live. Let us go from fantasy to faith and to live not by sight. Let us live by faith in Jesus Christ, our crucified and resurrected Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our hymn of invitation, Victory in Jesus, hymn number 370.